Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Check it out. Snow falling across Metro Detroit. We're getting a live look here at Ann Arbor. Just one of many communities across the area kicking off the start of a wintry weekend ahead. Thanks so much for joining us for Local 4 News at 6 o'clock. I'm Ty Steele. And I'm Damon Fernandez. You know, this isn't the first snowfall we've seen this season, but this is definitely the most we've seen sticking to the ground. Check this out. A viewer from Novi sent us this photo on my pics of snow covering the roses in their garden. Pretty beautiful if you look at it. Although it looks pretty, you're going to want some extra time on the roads because they will be slick. Brian Sherman joining us now with what we can expect. When can we expect the snow to slow down a bit or can we? I think it'll be overnight tonight and early tomorrow morning time to Mondo where we start to see some of these snow showers wind down. Tower cam over downtown Detroit, a break and some of the snow showers here heading into the six o'clock hour tonight, but we are keeping the cold temperatures around for everybody sitting at 27 here in downtown Detroit. It's very breezy west southwest wind at 17 miles an hour puts our wind chills or what it feels like outside well into the teens for just about everybody. Low 20s in Port Huron and the lower end of the teens from Ann Arbor working over toward Lansing as well as Jackson. So hold on to that winter coat. It's going to be a very cold overnight tonight. A classic lake effect snow event happening right now over much of the Great Lakes, leaving us with at least a couple inches of snow in some locations. And I'm going to hold on to some of the snow showers as we head throughout the rest of the evening and part of the overnight temperatures slowly falling mid 20s by midnight to 2 a.m. And while we keep a few flurries around heading through the weekend, we do dry things out early next week. I'll talk more about that and another round of snow that's on the way. Your full forewarn forecast coming up in just a few minutes with the snow around. Don't forget to download that forewarn weather app. You've got exact track 40 radar, all of our forecast updates, everything you need in the palm of your hand. You can find it in your favorite app store. Search WDIV. We're seeing a few you know, parts of Michigan could see as much as 21 inches of snow by the end of the weekend. As Brian explained, temperatures are well below freezing and expected to stay that way, making for some particularly dangerous conditions on bridges and overpasses. Yeah, a lot of snow in a short period of time. Let's go out live to Jacqueline Francis out in the cold forest this morning. Jacqueline, about an hour ago, those, state, those snowflakes were coming down hard. We can see they're still coming down. <laughs> They are. We've been in Westland for a couple hours now. The snow has been consistent. It's definitely sticking here. It feels like it's more than an inch. I'm not the meteorologist, but just from what I'm looking at and behind me is Ford Road. This year you can see the cars are taking it slow. There is snow on the road. We haven't seen any plows yet, so you really got to take it easy because on our way out here we did see quite a few spin arounds and some near crashes. Now we want to show you a video taken late this afternoon in Detroit. This was at Livernoy and Fenkel. You can see a lot of the same, maybe not quite as much snow, but it's sticking to the ground there. Cars are taking it slow. And this is really going to continue throughout the evening. A lot of people are out and about today. Black Friday shopping, maybe visiting family, whatever it is. Just try to get where you're going safely. Take it slow. Again, we saw some near misses out there and we want everyone to get where they're going safely. Reporting live in Westland, I'm Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Great advice, Jacqueline. Thank you. Stay warm. All right, parts of an East Detroit neighborhood is left in ruins tonight after a huge fire demolished multiple homes on Justine Street. That's near East Outer Drive in Ryan. Sky 4 flew over the scene earlier this morning. As Sean Lay explains, the fire spread quickly from one home to another. Good evening from Detroit's east side. This is Justine and Luce, where essentially an entire corner of this block burned to the ground today. Let me walk you through it. This home right here, a family from Yemen came here, and this was their dream home. They were fixing it up so far, putting $60,000 into the home. It is destroyed. Nothing is left. No insurance. The home is gone. The $60,000 are gone. This home unoccupied. This is where fire investigators think the fire started. Look at this. It burned down into its foundation next door. One man was living here as the fire spread. Uh, he was not home at the time. He came back today and just could not believe the damage as this fire spread house to house to house. The last house damaged here. Uh, a woman lives here. She was downstairs. She saw the smoke and saw lots of fire and then saw firefighters at her door saying, get out. They helped her get out from Sky 4. Look at this scene here. An entire corner burning here, essentially destroying four houses. The cause here under investigation, but so many people impacted. So many people now looking for help. I spoke with that family from Yemen asking them if they needed help. They said not right now. They have a place to stay and they're going to see what they can salvage from the home there on the corner from Detroit's east side. Sean Lee, Local 4. 
All right, Sean, thank you. And another family is trying to rebuild after a devastating fire destroyed their home as well. This one happened just a week before Thanksgiving. Yeah, you know, many of you in our local four community are wrapping your arms around their family right now. At our latest check, the GoFundMe now has raised more than $23,000. Take a listen as Erica Erickson spoke to the family tonight. Thankful for life. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be able to be rebuilt. So thankful this holiday season that her family of 10, really 13, including her little grandbabies, made it out alive. I don't know where I'd be if they didn't get out. After a fire ripped into this couple's home on Grixdale of more than 20 years on Detroit's northeast side last Friday. We're hoping for the best. Oh, it looks so bad, though. 56-year-old Portland Hewling with her husband Willie by her side getting her first glimpse a week later. She didn't even know it was like this back here. The healing say someone firebombed the home next door. The flames quickly spreading and water and smoke ruining almost everything else. 24 years of memories gone. You come back here just to find little knickknacks. Yes, uh, little knickknacks. Uh, we had Christmas gifts uh, that we were ready to put together and those were lost as well. But since we brought you their story just a day ago, thousands raised 10,000 in just hours. Did you expect that? Oh, wow. I did not expect that. I'm telling you, I looked and was like, oh my oh, God, wow. this is incredible. The large family squeezed right now into a small home that's nearly empty being renovated. You don't even know where to start. <laughs> I know, I know. We gonna first get some beds. <laughs> We're going to get some beds, the first thing, beds, sheets, and pillows. This family holding on to their faith, overwhelmed by the community's generosity. We'll keep moving away. <laughs> keep pressing on. Keep pressing yeah, on. Keep pressing on. And there's people yeah. out there who want to help you. Yeah, and I'll just say this. Thank you. Thank you. It means the world to me, my husband and our kids. And my babies. Again, this family needs basic necessities. If you'd like to still donate, we have a link at clickondetroit.com. In Detroit, Erica Erickson, Local 4. All right, Erica, now if you're interested in lending this family a helping hand, you can head on over to clickondetroit.com or scan the QR code that's up on your screen right now. State police are trying to figure out exactly what happened in the moments leading up to a deadly crash on the lodge today. Take a look. Our cameras captured the aftermath. Just a bad crash. Officers telling us a driver in a Jeep was heading the wrong way in the southbound lanes on the lodge. This is around 430 this morning and that Jeep that you see here smashing into an SUV and that SUV bursting into flames killing the driver. At last check, the wrong way driver survived and is listed in critical condition in the hospital. A group in Detroit is raising awareness to help some local businesses this Black Friday. Black Leaders Detroit is partnering with local shops, boutiques, and restaurants. Organizers handed out $50 gift cards to shoppers to go toward purchases at select businesses along Livernoy Avenue of Fashion. One organizer says it's a chance to find unique items you won't find at big retail stores. We are able to get some exposure um, for businesses that have amazing products and services but don't have the marketing budget and some of the other entrepreneurs or businesses that benefit from Black Friday. So we really believe that what we do on a daily basis at Black News Detroit in providing grants and no interest loans to black businesses is important. That organization, Black Leaders Detroit, is also set to launch its 12 Days of Christmas grant giveaway that begins December 1st. All right, their go-to cleaning staple, disinfecting wipes seem like an easy way to spruce up a dirty surface, but depending on who's around, especially young children, using them might do more harm than good. Consumer Report shows us the downsides of those disinfecting wipes and what you can use instead. Sales of disinfectant wipes skyrocketed in the early days of the pandemic. Disinfectant wipes are convenient, sure, but it turns out they're often overkill for a simple cleaning job. Products labeled as disinfectants aren't simply cleaners. They also contain pesticides, and because of this, they require more careful handling than you might expect for a product that frequently appears on back-to-school supply lists. In many disinfectant wipes, the active ingredients include quaternary ammonia compounds, or quats for short. They are effective at killing germs and are even often used for infection control in some healthcare settings like hospitals. But quats can also trigger health problems like lung irritation, asthma, and allergies. These effects are especially concerning for kids because they breathe more air per pound of body weight than adults. 
no kids should be handling disinfecting wipes. Keep out of reach of children is right there on the label. The American Cleaning Institute said in a statement to Consumer Reports, disinfectants are safe when used as directed. Disinfectants should not be applied by children. Most routine household chores require cleaning, but not disinfecting. Old-fashioned soap and water will do the trick. If you like wipes convenience, there are plenty that clean, but don't disinfect. The EPA has a list of cleaning products that are considered to be safer than others. But certain situations, like a stomach McBug call for disinfecting to prevent the spread of the infection. Thoroughly clean and disinfect the surface and allow plenty of time for the area to dry. And make sure young kids are not in the room for a while. Rhonda Walker, Local 4. A lot to think about. And speaking of kids, if their school uses disinfecting wipes, Consumer Reports says you may want to ask if the wipes will be st stored out of reach of kids. And if your child has a respiratory condition like asthma, your doctor can actually write a letter requesting that wipes not be used around your child.